Welcome back to the Meadowtown Podcasts, where we deliver content to help our agents sell more homes. This episode is called The Millennial Mastermind. Millennials, born between 1981 and 1996, are the largest population group in the country. They represent 20% of the buying power and have a great deal of influence with older generations. Our Millennial Realtor panel share their experiences and thoughts as Alex Osai interviews Crystal Mitchell, Brock Gonchar, Shelby Elstone, and Jacob Caldwell. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're still going to have some people yeah. straggling in, so, but we're going to get started yeah. anyway. Um, thank you for coming out. Um, we decided to put together a Millennial panel um, because these guys are doing so much business, and there's a big question around what millennials are all about, and we read so many different things about, they get a bad rap, let's be honest. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we know that, in general, they shouldn't be getting a bad rap mm -hmm. from people that we work with and the clients that we deal with. And so we thought we would just gather four reluctant victims to come <laughs> up and uh, tell us a little bit about themselves, about uh, how they view the business, how they view your status as a millennial, in relation to other things. And so we're just going to kind of cruise ahead uh, as we sort of discussed a little bit. So Jacob, would you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Jacob Caldwell. Um, I run a small family team out of Waterloo uh, with Royal LePage Willie Realty. Uh, it's me, my mother, and then my wife, but my wife's off right now because we just had our first child. Um, so just a team of two for now. Um, I'm 27 years old. Um, yeah, we do business in Waterloo, Kitchener, Cambridge, uh, Guelph as well, and then all the surrounding areas. Uh, we've gone as far as Owen Sound. Didn't enjoy that. <laughs> it's about a two and a half hour drive for me. It was my grandparents' place, so I was like, whatever, I'll do it. Um, but uh, yeah, and then uh, I believe last year, um, I don't know if we're getting into that now, but last year we got the uh, Diamond Awards uh, in 2018. Um, which in our region is, I believe, 280 and above. I don't know if it varies. Um, and then this year we're on pace to do that with one less member, technically, because my wife is off. So, um, and hopefully, hopefully get to the next level. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Shelby? Uh, my name is Shelby Elstone. I'm from, I'm based out of Collingwood. I'm with Royal Page Locations North. Um, I'm going to be just heading into my third year this August. So I'm just finishing my second year. Um, I, 24. I originally joined on a team and I transitioned out of that um, just over a year ago now to be on my own. Um, I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, uh, I guess I was, so for my first year with the awards, I was a gold um, and I'm hopefully going to surpass that this year. Um, good year so far. Um, yeah. It's been a great family <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Crystal Mitchell. I've um, been in the business nine years. I'm uh, here in Georgetown, but I work mainly in Brampton, Caledon. Uh, we have a team of five agents and two assistants. Um, we've reached um, a red diamond last year, and I was awarded top 35 under 35 last year. Um, what else? What, what else do we need to talk about? I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, so I base out of Brampton and Caledon, been doing it nine years. I work with my mom, um, so I have that aspect the same as you as well. So, Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Brock. I've been in the business for four years. I'm on a team with my mom and dad, um, but I'm still very much responsible for my own sales, my own leads, stuff like that. Um, I've been loving the business so far. I joined for the same reason everyone else did, to make some money. And uh, it's been good the last four years. The, the first three years were decent, and then the last eight months or the last year, um, it's been really good. I've just been working really hard and trying to make kind of the most out of it. So I'm excited to be here today, and hopefully my perspective on working with millennials can share some value. And yeah, thanks for having me. Great. I'm gonna bounce around a bit. Um, yep. I guess the first thing is, we, you know, we came to talk about millennials. So when you hear uh, millennial. Crystal, maybe I can start with you. What do you think? What comes to your mind? Um, well, to be, and you want me to be honest, um, <laughs> we, I think of spoiled kids most of the time. I'm, I'm a millennial, and I think a lot of people look at me like I'm spoiled and I'm handed everything. Um, but it's very untrue. 
Um, millennials are really hard workers and they really want to move forward in life and they want to be homeowners. So, ugh. so um, I think, you know, they're just, they have a bad rap. They do. A lot of people are looking at them the wrong way. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, every single time, like, so my team structures me and my mother, like I said, whenever we get a first time home buyer or a young buyer, I take them on and they technically say, you know, oh, I expected a much older agent or something like that. I'm like, well, you know, I've been in this business for five years. Like, I, I know my experience. I have my experience. I know what I'm doing. Um, so I feel like I sometimes do get that bad rep as well. Um, but honestly, when I think of millennials, the first word that pops to my mind really is, is and this might sound cheesy, but opportunity. Like, our kind of age group has really the best opportunity out of all the past generations to do something mm -hmm. to it's just so much access i mean we got our phones we got our laptops we got everything we have so much access and opportunity to become someone i guess it's kind of my my process right <laughs> yeah. well, i think misunderstood um, especially in the real estate space i think so many realtors because of the average age of a real estate agent we think that we have to be super tech savvy or we have to um, message them on Facebook or FaceTime them all the time. And I don't think it's true. I think if we apply all these hard, um, long-term real estate work that's always worked on every other generation, that it will work with them and that they will value it just as much, maybe even more than the other generations have. Um, I completely agree with everyone. Um, I find the same. People look at me and they think that I was spoiled and, and you know, everything that I've I've had or worked towards um, was given to me but you know like all of us we just I kind of think of millennial as being green um, we just I just want myself at least I just want to work hard I want to be the best I can be I just want to keep go go going um, I don't want the red or the yellow light to stop I just want to keep going so I think yeah it's kind of a misconception of how people look at us um, I mean I can't say for all millennials I'm you know but um, for most of us and, and it's true, we have so much more technology now that it makes it, you know, we have to utilize it. But um, yeah, it's, it's interesting how people look at us. And I found even myself um, working in the beginning, um, I would have a lot of people look at me like, you're too young to be a realtor. Or they'd come into an open house and say, oh, are you an assistant? Well, I can now like, <laughs> I have to be licensed to be here. Um, but you know, the more you work and the more confident you are speaking, I find now, um, I can tell people are at ease when they talk to me because once we're kind of in a conversation, they know, I know what I'm talking about and it makes it a lot easier, um, in that sense too. Do you find sometimes uh, it's you or us internally that worry about what people are thinking, uh, more than maybe what they are and oh, we're yeah. sometimes trying to defend uh, are, you know, your age or your yeah. experience in advance? Has that ever happened? 100%, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm always self-conscious of that. Um, I'm a very OCD person in general. <laughs> um, so I always kind of care what people are thinking of me. But I know when I look back at situations, I probably overthought that aspect of it, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it comes in time with just being experienced and going through the process. So. Yeah, we, you know, uh, Jake and Shelby, we've never met before. Yeah. But I know yeah. Crystal and uh, Brock, and, you know, I know if they came into anybody's home and to talk to them about buying or selling real estate, uh, I doubt anybody would question, uh, you know, your age, your chronological age, I think. Uh, and that because I know how you both are, how you present, and how you carry yourselves. And I think sometimes we put a little bit more pressure on ourselves uh, trying to defend that in advance. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I mean, I've had situations before where I do go to a home or something like that, and then for some reason they ask how old I am, and I say 27, and they go, I thought you were like 33, 34. I'm like, oh, thanks. But <laughs> um, So I do kind of understand that where some people, you know, they might expect you to be older and, and, and get that, but when I do say that, I've had some times where people are like, oh, okay, maybe you're not as experienced as I thought you were. But at the end of the day, if I swear, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, I really don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm there to do my business as, as best as I can and be the best agent that I can for my clients. Um, so if someone says that to me, I just go out and prove them wrong, right? So. Uh, crossing generations. 
in clients you deal with. Tell us about the clientele that you generally deal with. Uh, Crystal, go for it. Um, I generally deal with um, clients who are making the second move. So they've already owned a home. They're out of the first time home buyer stage. They're selling and moving up, um, starting a family or um, needing a bigger house because they have multiple children. Um, so they're not really millennials per se, um, but I find like I deal with everybody the exact same way. And maybe you cater to someone who is not so tech savvy and on doing using DocuSign and stuff like that a little bit differently than you would someone who does. But these days, a lot of like my aunt is 77 years old and she uses DocuSign. So mm-hmm. it's just teaching people and it doesn't matter if you're 24 or 77 everyone is teachable if you just take the time to show them. And we shouldn't assume that someone who's right. 24 is capable of uh, 100%. understanding it. You know, it's, uh, we just went through this with a family member and I had a 70 year old uncle uh, docu-signing and mm-hmm. I had a 22 year old niece that had trouble with it. Yeah. Um, so it's, we sometimes assume that. What about you, Jacob? Um, my generations. Yeah, my bread and butter really is first time home buyers. Okay. Um, mainly because I was in that, you know, field not too long ago. So I know what they're going through and you know, with at least from our area right now, I don't know about here, but in our area pretty much anything below five hundred thousand is going into multiple offers. Um, and it's tough for some first time home buyers. So I know how to help them with that. Um, however, my mother, Vicky, um, if we do have an older client, uh, I'm not necessarily I pass them off, but we kind of judge it. If she meets a young couple and they're, she's kind of getting the vibe that I would, you know, be better for them, then we'll kind of switch. So, um, but I do a lot of first time home buyers and then, uh, pretty much the second step of that, like Crystal just said, they're, um, going in and helping them sell their, uh, their first home, moving on to the second home. That's, that's really where I am. Um, sorry, the question was, which generation do we find we're working with the most? No, yeah, just sort of, for, how do you deal differently across generations? Yeah, okay. Um, I've found so far in the last four years, I've really been dealing with kind of a wide variety of all the generations. I, I don't know if it seems the same for you guys, mm-hmm. but I feel like I've been dealing with everybody. And I think if we apply the same principles to every generation, whether they're 62, 42, or 22, if we provide value, service, we're honest, trustworthy, loyal, um, open, that that business model should work with everybody, no matter what their age is. So I've been working with everybody, and I think that that business model should work with everybody. Um, For myself, I don't know if it's my location, but um, (laughs) I have a lot of buyers coming from Toronto. Um, People are kind of migrating up to Collingwood. um, So I have a lot of first-time buyers that are maybe late 20s, early 30s that were coming from downtown. Now they want to start a family, so they're coming up. Um, And then my referrals have been, um, I guess, in their 40s, looking to um, move up in a home um, just based on other previous. But I kind of have a variety too, and, and I do find I am kind of, I agree that we should have a standard for all clients, um, but I do kind of cater differently to some. Like I just had a client that was retiring and she doesn't have an email address. (laughs) She lived, she was coming from Orangeville up. And um, so that required uh, different things for me with not using DocuSign. Um, And then I do have the first time buyers that are so excited to do the market education and they're you know, uh, like I have a buyer's guide and they're really enjoying the process of learning, which I like. Um, I really enjoy educating the first time buyers that, that want to learn and want to know what's going on with the process. Um, so it's, it's kind of, I enjoy it. <laughs> each, each different age group I find has a different um, need, but at the same time, always making sure it's high quality service. Um, same standards for everyone, just getting there a little differently sometimes. So, um, what's been your most challenging age group, do you find? Is there one? Or is it more subject to the person? Um, I think subject to the person. Um, people have different standards, I guess. Um, um, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say I have one. Um, I have certain, like, retiree uh, couples that I've absolutely loved working with, and then first-time buyers that I love. Like, I, I haven't had anything that stands out to me yet. <laughs> Um, just to get a sense, uh, listings or buyers, uh, which 
period do you focus on more? Um, I'd say about 50% of our business is buyers, um, 25% is listings, and then we actually dabble in commercial as well. So the other 25 is commercial. Um, I'm so last year I was primarily more on the buying end. Um, this year I've had more on the listing end. Um, but then I'm I would say I'm 50 50 because I also do have the people coming out and buying the secondary properties and they don't have something to sell, right? They're buying a vacation home in Blue Mountain. Um, but I would say probably 50 50 then this year so far. Crystal? Listings for sure. We have more listings than buyers. Yeah. Right. For me, it's been both. It's been a pretty even split. Yeah. Um, so getting into how you generate business, if you can think of your top two uh, ways of generating business, as Brock, what would you say your top two are? Well, I know we're here today to talk about millennials, so I'll talk just a little bit about social media and some stuff that I've had success with. And again, I think working with millennials has been misunderstood and people are looking for all these different things and that fit their personality or that are easy. And I don't think really there is anything that if we want to have the success that we want to have, or if we want to have the growth that we want to have, there's nothing easy and it all feels uncomfortable. And social media, I think, has been good and it's something that I use, but really that's just an extension of our database. And we apply all the old school real estate principles um, to our database and we, again, that social media is just an extension of that. So it's just keeping in touch. We might like a post, message them, but we're still texting them, calling them, doing our pop buys, doing our notes. Um, all the other stuff. So that's been good just in keeping in touch with people and in kind of curating that relationship with those people. Um, and then aside from that, it's been open houses. I found open houses are a great tool. I don't know if you guys use them or if you like them, but every person that walks into an open house is a fantastic lead. They're in the market to buy or sell. And if you're aggressive with that person and you follow up with them five times a week for the next four months, you're almost guaranteed, I think, to get business from it. So as long as we're aggressive and we actually take these leads in as sales reps and we treat them that way, I think that there's a really good resource there. Um, top, two. top two is referrals and networking for sure. 20% um, of my business actually comes from Royal Page referrals. If you guys aren't working it, you need to work it. There's a huge business in Royal Page, real to real to referrals um, and networking. I have two different networking groups I go to. I'm on also a networking group with my subdivision, a moms in my subdivision. We all get together um, a, quite a few times a year, maybe four or five times a year. We put on events. Um, so those are my two biggest source of business, referrals and networking. Can you expand on your referrals? When yeah. You say, a lot of people don't necessarily or may not understand what you mean as to how sure. you network with agents from other markets. You guys yep. are prime examples, by the way, but yeah. you're here today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great example is go speak somewhere. Um, we go to all the conferences, um, we go on chairmans, we go on a lot of different events that Royal Age, Royal Page puts on and we network with agents there. We're not just, we don't sit with our brokerage, sorry Alex, we don't sit with you <laughs> at awards. We sit with actual other agents from other companies and we talk to them. Um, I got a referral right two days after the awards. Um, and I sold them a house and you know, within two days, that was well worth my time at the awards. I talked to everybody, I'm friendly, I welcome new people, especially at chairman's, I find um, there's a lot of clicks and a lot of people stick to who they know. I've always been taught by my mom to welcome the newcomers because those are the ones that need the most um, guidance as to what's going on and just kind of welping, welcoming them in so they feel, sorry. So they feel like they're included. Um, so I kind of make a point to do that as well. And same with the networking events before um, the awards. We have Royal Page puts on event. There's about 150 people that go. There's a thousand people that go sometimes to the awards. There should be a lot more numbers there at the networking events before the awards, for sure. Now just to share with you, I've seen the Mitchell group show up at an event and they're like foot soldiers. They divide and conquer. <laughs> and, and you know, there's no, it's not hanging around the bar, no. it's moving around, talking to people, looking for people to make eye contact, shaking hands, yeah. saying hello, talking about where they work, you know, and, and that's the way I see you guys yeah. as being really, really good at that. Yeah. Um, and I know Paula's been doing that for um, 33 years. years. Yeah, and you followed right into it. And, yeah. Uh, it's, it's refreshing. 
Mm-hmm. Are those people that you meet, are they part of your database and you're keeping in touch with them the agents? throughout the year? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we do. And sometimes we don't, but we have such a large network that we, we do. We, yeah. And we send out a lot of referrals too. We don't go outside of our trading area at all. Like I'd never go to Collingwood. I'd <laughs> never go to Guelph even. And it's just 15, 20 minute drive. But if you really focus in on your area and other agents know that, they respect you a little bit more. And they're like, you know what, they're not going to come in my area. I'm going to pass them on. My, my people that are moving from Brampton or Caledon, I find that I get that a lot because I don't go to their areas. They won't come to mine either. You two get the message. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't come here. Don't come here. <laughs> Brock yeah. and I can handle yeah. it. Okay. Jacob. Um, really, I mean, it's two different ends of the spectrum for me, really face-to-face and then not face-to-face, I guess. So we focus a lot, uh, like I said, our bread and butter kind of is first-time home buyers, and those first-time home buyers, most of the time are millennials, and millennials are on this 99% of yeah. the time. So we focus on targeted ads, everything like that, blast it out to certain areas. Um, we spend probably a little too much money on them, <laughs> but uh, but it works. We, we see the returns, so... Um, and then like our online leads too from our website. Our website does generate leads for us too. Um, and then the face-to-face, you know, going to these events, um, getting out to community events even. We go to, we help run a hockey tournament. Um, I actually live in Elmira, so there's a big hockey tournament in Elmira um, in the fall. So we help run that. Um, we uh, do events like that. I help coach hockey sometimes. Um, so just getting out there and getting your face out there, I think really does does help a lot. Shelby, you're up. Um, so my two main ones probably, so one, um, I'm now trying to focus my business on referrals. Um, I'm into Buffini. I don't know if anyone else is in mm-hmm. Buffini or here. <laughs> um, I went to my first Buffini conference in Toronto this past year. I'm definitely planning to go back. I use their CRM. Popeye, follow-ups, monthlies. Um, so I'm really working into that. And, and I'm now going into my third year, I'm, I'm seeing my referrals from um, my clients and repeats. Um, so that's what I'm trying to focus on mainly. Um, my other main source is online. Um, social media has a huge presence now. Um, people don't really look in the newspaper as much. <laughs> um, I'm learning... Um, I'm seeing return now in, um, for example, my boyfriend's into the motocross community and I'm going to these races with him and just, he's, he's known this community for a long time and just from people following him on social media and him tagging me and things, all these people are now following me and they come up to me and they're like, hey, you know, and start talking to me and I have no idea who these people are, but you know, it's starting to kind of be front of mind with the, that. And I've, I've had now a few sales out of that group of people. Um, and then um, to go with the online is um, like, I don't have a website. I have my Instagram, Facebook, and my brokerage pro- profile. Um, I'm very fortunate that my broker Des is amazing and, and does such a great job with our website that so far this year, I've had four, four or five phone call emails based off of my profile because I actually had it filled out um, personally so they had something to connect with me um, whether it was motorcycling or traveling Asia or you know that's what drawed them to me and made them call me and say hey I have a house can you sell it for me or hey I'm looking to buy here can you help me and I always ask you know like oh did you get my name from friend family online they're like oh just like I Googled realtors in Collingwood and our brokerage site comes up first and then they go to our profiles and mine stood out. Like I'm finding that's been a really good resource for me. So those would be my two. You know, all of you had something in common was a combination of face to face and getting, you know, sort of expanding your personal networks, um, which is a really, really important thing. Um, How do you see yourselves and social media, of course, so between those two things, and you compare yourselves to maybe some of your colleagues, because you know you're you're all in active offices. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you see yourselves being different than your colleagues of other generations? Me first, <laughs> sure, sounds good. Okay. Um, you're in. 
Well, when we started, we were actually, we weren't with Royal LePage, we were with the Remax brokerage. Um, and there, honestly, I would not even be able to answer that question because there was a very shut door. No one really talked to anybody, like other colleagues and everything like that. It was very, that person's doing their business. Don't worry about it. Focus on mine. Now with Royal LePage, I'm, I'm getting to know my colleagues at uh, Royal LePage Willie Realty a heck of a lot better. Um, it's much more of a community. And what I'm noticing is if there's an agent who's been in the business for 30 years and they're not doing online leads or online ads or anything like that, they're going to come to me and be like, how do I get into that? How do I start that? And ask me questions. And it's kind of the same thing if I have a question about like an OG kind of way to do things, um, which means original gangster, but just I'll just stick with original. Um, it's just an original way of doing business and I don't know it. I'm going to go to them. So with our office, it's a mix of both. I'm seeing lots of online ads start. Um, and then lots of the kind of back to basics kind of business. Yeah. Crystal? Can you answer, say the question again? <laughs> I'm no, trying to think. Just at the end of it. Oh, great. <laughs> great. I fail. How do you see um, some of the other generations, how they do business versus how you do and you right. like to do business? So I, can, I see it a lot with my mom and I, um, how when I first came, we had... She always had a website. She was one of the first realtors in Royal LePage, actually, to have a full independent website. But she was lacking social media. Um, so I found that I've been bringing that more in play um, for our team and um, getting that on board and teaching her. And most of you may not know our team member, Maureen. You know, Maureen is very not tech savvy at all. So we're very... Um, open to helping her and showing her. Sometimes we have to show her six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. <laughs> but she'll figure it out one day. So we know, even you, Matt, like you come to me sometimes and ask us how we're doing things or what we're doing online. And everybody, too, like you said, we're very open. And our brokerage here in Georgetown is phenomenal. Like I love, I can go to Betty's office and ask her anything about rule. I can go to Sylvana and ask her anything about Georgetown South. Like they're, we're very open and welcoming and whether or not somebody needs help with social media or the online stuff with me or I need stuff um, we're very easy to communicate with each other so hopefully that answers um, I'm not sure I really understand the question either but th what's the difference between the different generations of, of realtors and how, how you what see are they? yourself building your business currently and oh, I see. how you see generations before you how they do business differently and any observations that you might make around that I think really at the end of the day, it just comes down to hard work and, and putting in the time. Um, I think that all the generations of realtors all have the same fears, the same thoughts, the same insecurities, the same, you know, it doesn't matter if you're 24 or 25 and you're in the business and you're sitting in front of somebody who's 60 and you're thinking, oh, maybe they think that I don't know what I'm thinking about because of my age. When you first start, you're thinking, well, even if I'm 45 years old and I'm sitting at the same table, maybe they don't think that I know what I'm talking about because I've only been in the business for two years. So I think we're all hitting the same insecurities. We all have the same fears and we need to step outside of our comfort zone, put in the work, practice, um, and listen to the experts. Like even the ones we've had so far, if Rob Kelly says that we need to practice our, our listing presentation, well, every day for an hour, we should be sitting down and going over our listing presentation. Mm -hmm. If Finn says we need to call 10 people a day, then we should be picking up the phone even though it sucks and we don't want to do it, we should call 10 people a day. You know, if he says, okay, we should go door knocking in a farm area and get to know people in a certain geographical location, or we should put on our boots and go for a walk and knock on some doors, even though it sucks. And I just think that we need to step outside of our fears and be uncomfortable and work hard. Does that answer the question? It's kind of a yeah. spin. Yeah. Um, interesting. I'm... I absolutely love my brokerage and same, um, it's a great community and um, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I have such a good relationship with a lot of the agents in my office where I can go and ask them questions and then now I'm feeling they're coming to me and asking. Like I've had quite a few people ask me how to create a Facebook ad, but for me that was just automatic, um, easy to do and, you know, and it's been interesting to see a different generation of realtors now coming to me to know how to do it, right? Um, I think that kind of touches on that. Um, 
And uh, it's interesting that you just said about cold calling and door knocking because those are things I don't do. <laughs> um, and I think about the odd time, but I've, and maybe I should go into it. But again, I don't know if that's just because I know there is agents in my office that are doing that and they're having great success from it. Um, but I've been focusing on, you know, like the Facebook ads and things like that. And I've had success from that. So it's kind of a different way of doing it. But, but even the buffoon stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm, but the, I'm generally calling them the people in my database. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not. Sorry. Okay. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm not definitely cold, cold calling. Yeah, <laughs> um, I am trying to, yeah, always sure. take, uh, stay in touch with my database. Yeah. 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 Cool. So I'm going to take the pressure off you guys for a minute. Mm -hmm. What do you do for fun? When you're not working? Uh, well, like I said, I just had my first uh, child, so the past month, well, I wouldn't call it fun. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's been fun. Um, a lot of sleepless nights, but... Uh, you need to call your wife and see if she's just as much yeah. fun as you do. <laughs> well, it's been crazy, let's just say that. But uh, now I get home and that's what I want to do. I want to spend time with my family and, and my daughter. So, um, But in the past, uh, I would... Pretty much three days out of the week, I was playing either soccer or hockey. Um, just, I don't know, hanging out with hanging out with buddies and everything like that. Um, I really got into golf in the past two years, like I'm pretty sure everybody has. Um, <laughs> and kind of taking that up. But I haven't got out this season because my daughter saw. <laughs> um, and then one of my big things too in my business is I like to stay true to myself and who I am. Um, so when I'm with people, I'm not afraid to say it. Some people don't like this, but I'm also a gamer. Um, play a lot of games online and everything like that. It's just something that I do. And I've actually generated quite a bit of business from that too, That's which is, I never thought that would work. And it has. I've got about, over the past five years, I've probably closed like 10 deals just from gaming. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep that up. <laughs> yeah, nice. So um, myself, um, as I mentioned earlier, my boyfriend's really into the motocross, um, so dirt bike racing on a track. Um, I grew up in Halliburton originally, um, so I grew up four wheeling and dirt biking and everything like that in a trail. Um, he's recently got me on a track. I completed my first race last weekend, which wow. was uh, very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I couldn't have done it without him. Um, so we do that on most, he, he's in sales as well, he sells trucks. Um, but he always has Sundays off. So I try and uh, book up my Saturdays with work so I could take Sunday off with him. And we pretty much dirt biking every weekend. Um, I also grew up, um, my father-daughter bonding was motorcycling. So I've grown up doing that. Um, I'm still into that, even though I don't live close to my parents anymore. Um, summer water sports. I moved to Collingwood for the outdoor reason. <laughs> um, hiking, biking, uh, skiing, snowboarding. Um, so I have a pretty, pretty busy life outside of work. Um, but you know, having that makes me work harder so that I can afford to, you know, cause sports are expensive, sure. <laughs> um, to be able to enjoy it and take the time to do that. So, um, yeah. Crystal. Um, mine is like, um, you were, I, I like to spend time with my family. I have a <laughs> six year old and I have twins that are two and a half. So my life is insane. <laughs> outside of work. So work is actually a break for me. <laughs> I go to work to get away from my family sometimes. Um, and we like to, we always like to do something. So we're either going to Wonderland or the zoo, but it's always in, involves our, our kids. Um, I, like you all know, we work a lot and our families sacrifice. So I try to take Sundays off as well. It's the only day of the week that my husband and I are both home. Sometimes it happens where you have appointments, you got to make time for your clients, but I try and take Sundays off as well. Um, I love yoga, snowboarding as well. I used to do a lot since I've had kids. It's on the back burner, but I love to travel as well with and without the children. So I'm, a, I'm an avid traveler as well. Um, I'm trying to have a life. I find it so hard with, our, like in our business. I'm sure you guys all know what it's like. Um, and I'm trying to take one day off a week. Last Saturday was the first day where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take the whole day off. And between two and four, I was going through other people's open houses. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I like to golf, spend time outside, spend time with my family. I'm really close with my friends and family, so I like to spend time with them and just be outdoors. That's pretty much it. No, you also ride motorcycle. I have a motorcycle, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And Crystal likes to go in the back of the motorcycle. Love. Oh, really? really? Professional yeah. passenger. This I could work. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby also has a thing for motorcycle. Yeah. Jacob? Not a chance. No. <laughs> if, I, if I, I was telling Shelby, if I can go fast, that's bad news. Yeah. Well, I will hurt myself so quickly. I've broken so many bones because I went to, actually, kind of a small yeah. world. One of my buddies owns a, a, a racing team, as she knows, and I was saying when, when we were growing up together, it was just like broken leg, broken arm, broken fingers, broken hands, broken everything. So it was like, no, nope, I'll stay away from that. <laughs> Don't want to break any, anything for yourself. So, yeah. Does, do you, do any of you parlay your, um, your personal passions with business? So would you bring clients uh, snowboarding with you or? You, do you do any of you mix that so you can sort of have some social and some business together without it being all business? Anybody? Well, we just did our movie day um, client appreciation event, so that was with families. So I we had I don't know we had two over two hundred people come on the weekend on Saturday morning, and my family was there and all of their families, including some of the moms from my neighborhood that haven't purchased or sold with me, but I invited them anyways. And I know we're going to talk about this, the charity aspect as well, but we do a lot of stuff with the women's shelter and we invited all of the women and the kids from the women's shelter to come out as well. Um, so they enjoyed the movie as well. Um, nobody knew that we did that, like our clients and friends, they came and it was like they were, you know, so we do bring our clients involved in our lives with our family and friends as well. So, yeah, so movie day and then Christmas, we do a big one too. Um, I've had clients come to yoga with me, um, ski snowboard. I joined a women's volleyball league over the winter and it turns out a few of them motorcycles. So we're trying to plan something for the summer. Um, so I try to, depending, like I'm in an active area and if people are new coming into town from Toronto, I always try and, you know, give them the options of there's so many different leagues and things to join in our area. So I always keep them up to date with them. I'll go with them. Um, I enjoy that aspect of them, that's keeping in touch with them. I, I truly get friendships out of my, you know, out of all my deals and it's, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much everything that, I mean, I go golfing with clients. Um, I used to play ball hockey, uh, pretty high level, um, <clears throat> for, we won provincial championships and national championships. Um, and pretty much every person on both of those teams, except for one, has been a past client or currently is a client um and uh yeah we do like i said i do coach uh some hockey every once in a while uh with another good friend of mine and most of those parents uh with their young children uh, their their clients so everyone that i'm meeting out there pretty much um obviously is a potential client but a lot of the people that i see on a day-to-day -day basis have been current clients or past clients so um, I don't really do any of that right now, but I, I should. I should. I think we all should, really. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking back at my transactions in the last year and just kind of trying to get a grasp of like where they've been coming from. And like my barber, my chiropractor, someone that I knew from hockey, uh, a parent's friend. I think the more people we know, the more transactions we're going to do. I think there's a direct link. And it's definitely something that we should incorporate, that I should incorporate, but I, I haven't. Crystal, could you expand on your charitable work? I know the shelter is a big part. Um, yeah. Can you sort of talk to us about what you do with them? Sure. How that yeah. works for you personally and professionally? Yeah, it works It works both ways. So we, um, we do three events a year, and every event we do, we give back to the women's shelter. So we've done our movie day, so we ask everyone to bring non-perishable food items, um, and we invited like I said, all of the mums, not all of them came, but we had about um, 44, 45 of them come from the women's shelter. You know, they live a really tough life and to get them out and just not think about what they're going through really um, resonates with them. And it, you know, it's, we're most likely not gonna get business from them, but it's not about that. It's just about giving them a normal day. Um, and then we do a golf tournament. Last year we had, um, just under 40 golfers, we raised over $6,000 that we give back to the women's shelter as well. Um, we have sponsors from so many different sponsors. It's amazing the amount of people who help us. Um, everybody seems to want to help the local shelter, um, our clients. We reach out to them. We have three touch points a year with our parties to 
Okay, reach out to our clients and ask them for donations or uh, food for food drives. And then Christmas, we do, I don't know how many, 250 clients we had last year. You were there, Alex. You've been Pinder. Um, we, we do a Christmas party at my mom's house. About 200 to 250 people are kind of circling through. We ask everyone to bring an unwrapped gift for the kids at the women's shelter. So we reach out to the shelter. We ask them, what types of families do you have there? So they're, they're there for about 12 to 16 weeks on average. So there's a turnover rate quite often about every few, three, four months. So we want to make sure that we get stuff for the kids that are currently there. Um, we have we get so many truckloads of toys. Uh, we get gift cards, and it 100% of it goes to the women's shelter. We drop it off before Christmas. We yeah we do a lot with the women's shelter. It's important to give back, especially with what we do. Um, the money we make, we should be giving back. Like everyone should be giving back, whether or not it's arranging something so people can bring food drive. It, you don't have to physically put out money if you don't have it, but arrange something, arrange a food drive or a, a toy drive. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. So. You know, with, uh, within the Royal Page Shelter Foundation too, you're also, people oh. who contribute to shelter yeah. are recognized for their level of contribution, but they're also searchable by internally by other realtors from across country as shelter contributors, but they're also searchable by the public. Yeah. So when you do some good in the community, People who are interested in that can look it up and see, uh, and maybe select an agent mm -hmm. that you know does give back. Yeah, we do get a lot of referrals because of that. We're a top one percent uh, donor. Um, we also donate through our commissions as well, but most of it comes through our events. And for a long time, we didn't even have. We gave it directly to the shelter. Um, last year, we came and started doing it again through Royal Page. It just gets a little bit. Um, the wires get crossed a lot because it goes through so many hands that sometimes they don't get it in time for when they need it. So we just started doing it right to the shelter. But last year, I guess there was a change in management with Royal LePage head office. So now we've been doing it again through directly through Royal LePage. So, yeah. Jacob, community? Um, not as much as we would like. This year is actually, that's one of the main things that we're trying to focus on um, just because like I've only been with Royal Page for just going on a year now. Um, so our previous brokerage, great brokerage, but there was nothing really like that. Um, that was easily accessible. So with the access that we have to the Shelter Foundation now, um, our brokerage does do a, uh, like a Christmas movie uh, and food drive event at the end of the year. So we participated in that last year. Um, but just our team, uh, we want to do do more this year so it's something that we actually have a meeting what's today Wednesday no. so tomorrow <laughs> yeah so tomorrow about so you didn't visit this morning no I was like oh god <laughs> my days are getting old yeah. Um, I personally haven't. Um, it's something I would like to do, um, potentially maybe partner with someone in my office. Um, my broker, like our brokerage does do a lot of um, different things. I think last week there was a golf tournament. I should be more involved in these things. <laughs> um, there is a few things that the brokerage does um, I want to get more involved in. I haven't. Um, I plan to. Otherwise, personally, I haven't. Um, I have one first time buyer client that asked me, um, it's funny, we met and it was one of those, oh, we had the same middle name. Oh, we also <laughs> did this. And then, and then we also knit, which was something very random. A lot of people my age don't knit. <laughs> um, so she's asked me to help knit baby hats with her that we're going to donate, I think before Christmas this year. Um, it's her thing, so she's going to be deciding where we're donating them. She said sick kids. I don't know where Mount that's going to happen yet. Great one yeah, we're going to have to look into it. Mm -hmm. She has the, she she's the head of that, small. but I've been making different sizes. There's most of them. I'm looking at them like, these are so, I haven't had a child myself, but I'm like, these are so small. I don't oh, know. <laughs> um, so we're working on that, but um, that's all for now for me. <laughs> Um, I haven't done anything like that. I think it's such a good idea, though. Um, right now, I'm planning a poker tournament that's going to be for charity, so we'll see. Have you guys had any experiences with running an event like that or something like that? Anybody? Any ideas? What's that? Talk to Emma and 
Yeah, 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 she's really good at that. Like poker specifically, or mm-hmm. just no, just about any event that okay. would be. And good everyone, for. anybody has questions on what we do and how we do it, like feel free to reach out. I'm pretty much an open book when it comes to that <laughs> stuff. I'm not. Um, I like to share. I'm not in competition as much as everyone thinks we're all in competition. <laughs> I don't look at it that way. I look at us as advocates, and we're here to support each other. So if anyone needs anything, they can always reach out. And if you're not at the stage where you're ready to do your own <coughs> events, then piggyback on a company event. Get, just yeah. get involved, volunteer, yeah. do things like that, and then sort of walk before you run. And, and, it's, and it takes time to get yeah. sort of... Yeah, and it also gives you kind of an idea of how to run it yourself sure. when you go to do it. Sure. I think it's a great idea, too, because we do client, client appreciation events. I'm sure everyone yeah. has, does that to some degree. Um, but it's very much about us and our business and what we do. And like, it's so mm-hmm. self-centered and the focus is on us. And if it's about a charity, it takes it away from us. It's about us being with community. Mm-hmm. It's a way to meet new people. And I think yeah. it's great for our business and the charity that we're contributing to. Uh, changing gears a little bit, um, suppliers, uh, everyone deals with lenders, inspectors, mm-hmm. you name it. What are your expectations when you deal with a supplier? How do you interact with them? How do you stay attached to what they're doing and coordinated with your client? Tell us about how you do that, Jake. Well, most of the time, from my experience at least, with, uh, with the first-time homebuyers and millennial age group, a lot of them will say, oh, I, I'll use my bank, or oh, my parents have a lawyer, or I know a home inspector, which shocking that they know home inspectors but um Mm -hmm. every once in a while we do give out a couple names that we usually use um for example one of our lawyers i actually have his cell phone which i'm sure you can relate (laughs) to this that's pretty damn impressive like lawyers you call their office get their assistant two days later they call you back i can text this guy and get an answer within 10 minutes so um, that's one of the main things that we like to focus on with our lenders and everything like that is uh communication because millennials need answers like that. I want answers like that, so if I can get it, great. Um, The other thing is um, respect. I want them to respect me, me to respect them, and also people who I'm referring. Like, I've heard of horror stories where the lawyer's meeting a client of someone else, and they're like, yeah, this guy doesn't make much money, the deal's not gonna go through, I'll pass you off to the junior lawyer or something like that. Or my guy, he doesn't do that. He's always with them constantly. It's like, but my time's up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, honesty as well. I need the honesty with them. If if I have a mortgage broker that's messing around and just wasting my time and wasting my client's time, or a lawyer, or a home inspector, anything like that, I'm just not pleased with that. So just communication, honesty, and respect. That's the three main things that I need. If if they have that and they provide it to me and to my clients, great. And I provide that back to them too. So. Shelby. Um, same thing. Um, as I had uh, mentioned earlier, I have a buyer's guide. So I've collected over the past two years the mortgage agents, lawyers, and home inspector that I truly do trust. Um, I have a standard of my service, and I expect that the people I refer my clients to have the same. Um, there has been the odd, uh, say, mortgage agent that I don't deal with anymore because my client had a bad experience. Um, but all of the people I refer to now, I've had great feedback from my clients on them. Um, I do ask because I want to make sure that when I am referring them again, that their, you know, their level of service is staying the same. Like I have my select home inspectors. Um, um, I recently started using a new lawyer and they've been amazing and I don't know why I haven't found them earlier. Um, (laughs) but I've, um, yeah, I've, over the past, it's taken me some time to find those select people, but I have them now, and um, it's, um, I just, yeah, I want to make sure my clients have the best service, so I've found them, and now I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, I, I, same thing. I use yeah. pretty much the same few people for every deal if I can. I find a lot of people these days, their clients have been to the banks already and have the person that they feel comfortable with because their parents have used them and it's been generational but I have an amazing mortgage broker she's I went to school with her husband I've sent you her her name as well so she's what I find most about our suppliers is they need to be educational Mm -hmm. Um, they need to show their value as well and it's not just about working the numbers but it's about 
teaching them. So the mortgage broker I use, if somebody is not qualified or doesn't look like they're going to be qualified, but there's ways that they can within the next six months or a year, she'll work with them very closely and how to get their credit up. And she's really attentive to that. And I find a lot of first time home buyers like that. Um, they know that they can call her anytime. I can call her anytime as well. Um, so I try and find people that I can rely on like that, that they're patient with my clients as well. Um, my home inspector, I have a couple as well. Um, and that it's all dependent on how quickly I get a response. I've sent out messages or called um, home inspectors. I know they're busy working with other agents, but if I don't get a call back within five to 10 minutes, I need to move on to the next one. So I have three that I do that. And I find my clients all trust me with choosing a home inspector and most of the time a lawyer, the mortgage broker, a lot of them have somebody, so. Um, obviously the common thread is service and that's obviously important. Um, and that's the number one thing. We work so hard to prove ourselves professionally and we work every day to service them as best as we can and to pass them off to somebody and give a referral. They become an extension of us. And if they give them poor service, they think that, I think, without really being conscious of it, they think that we're giving them bad service. So definitely the service has to be there. Another thing is we expect the people that we refer to, like our mortgage broker, our home inspector, plumbers, electricians, all of them, um, we have an expectation for them to refer to us and to transact with us if they're going to be doing something personally. And if we are professional, if we're diligent in keeping up with them, we add them to our database and treat them just like, like a lead or a database ad, mm -hmm. why wouldn't they transact with us if we're doing our job properly? Mm -hmm. So we expect them to do that as well. You said a couple of things I wanted to kind of backtrack a little bit. <clears throat> with um, working with lenders, how, um, how involved are you in understanding your client's finances? Uh, do you hand them to the lender and take it from there, or do you sort of get a picture of the finances first and then sort of manage it moving forward? Jacob? Usually I, well, we have an in-house mortgage broker at our office now. Um, so really if there is a situation that comes up, she just walks out and comes into my office, or I walk out and go to hers. Um, but most times I will just refer them. They get in touch. Um, for some reason, they can't get a hold of each other. Then she comes to me. I call them, tell them to get moving and call her. Um, but in regards to their financing, I, I kind of leave that with her. If there are like weird situations, I do like to be updated. Um, and I tell her to tell me just so I'm on the same boat. I'm not kind of out of the blue. So, uh, yeah, but I don't really get that involved. Um, just the sticky situations here and yeah. there. Yeah. Um, for me, I, for a buyer, as an example, um, very early on in our process, I ask if they've been pre-approved, like I don't want to be running around showing them houses that love something and can't afford it. So that's yeah. kind of one of my first conversations with them in general. Um, and then, you know, if they're like, oh no, we haven't, but we have a general idea. I always give them my two or three people, give them a call, see where you're at. We'll still proceed, but I make sure that's kind of there. And then by the time we have an offer around, they've connected with one of the people that I gave them with, and then it's out of my hands. I don't, it's personal. I wouldn't want other people to know mine. Um, so I kind of leave that with them. Of course, if there's an update, like I, my, my mortgage agents are good with keeping me in communication with, you know, we, we, this should be up for tomorrow. Like they're really good with keeping me up to date without knowing any details in that right. sense. Yeah. Um, I like when my mortgage brokers keep me involved so I know what's going along with the process because a lot of the time it's just um, what the clients tell us. Like it's kind of broken record, yeah. right? So it's kind <laughs> of like lie. they tell you, oh, it'll be done in two days. And then so I've had clients who use some a broker and they'll send me the communications or keep me in the email so I know what's going on. So it all depends on what the client's how much they want me to be involved. If they want me to know more, I'll know more, but if not, then I'll kind of step back. But the mortgage brokers that I do use always will give me the call heads up, hey, everything looks good, green light, go. I do not, however, take out anybody unless I've gotten their pre-approval. I won't step foot in a house unless I know, unless it's at one of my listings, I'm trying to show my clients that we're working the best we can, I will 
show somebody who picks up the phone and calls me on the sign here and there, not very often. Um, Brampton is a very different market and we need to be very protective of ourselves as well as our clients. Um, that's my main trading area. So we kind of treat them a little bit differently with pre-qualifications, but my clients, I sign them up and I get them pre-approved before I take them anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I think none of us should spend a second with somebody who's not qualified. And a lot of the times too, the phone rings, they don't even know what they want. And exactly. we're in the business every day and we don't want to ask them about their finances when obviously that's a big part of the picture. So yeah, right away, right away I ask and I want to know what's going on with their finances. And that's part of the educational process that's part of providing service yeah. is helping them with their specific needs. And if we don't know their financial status or picture, then how can we help them with their specific needs? Can I chime back in? Sure. <laughs> um, I was going to say that um, I completely agree. I've, I've found though that sometimes when you ask people about financing, it really scares them. Mm -hmm. um, so I will show someone properties once. Um, I want to build the rapport with them. I want them to be comfortable with me so that when they are ready, that they will continue to work with me. I completely understand not going out. Um, I've found that that's then kind of bit me a couple times. Yeah. So I will go out the one time. It's always a conversation before we go. I'll go out the once, build the rapport, and then it's, okay, serious. We need to know uh, where you're at, and then we'll continue from there. Yeah. So I send my that. clients to a buyer's guide as well, like yeah. you do. Um, and I do have a portion in there from one of the mortgage brokers that I use <laughs> detailing Importance. the step-by-step -step and what they need to do and what they need to know about their finances before they go out and look. So that's the first step with any buyer that I have, whether it's a referral from another agent or not, I try and send them that piece of information. And even resale, people are buying second time around, they forget. They have no oh, idea yeah. what they went through the first time because it's Should buying a house is stressful. And they forget the whole process. So that buyer guide I find is a huge tool for us as well to get business, create the rapport, have them trusting us and moving forward as well. Oh, also we're here for millennials. Millennials yeah. have money. Don't assume that just because they're yeah. young they don't have money. Yeah. A lot of them have money, for sure. Yeah. You just see uh, in Waterloo, all the tech companies that are coming down there, all the Millennials that are working for those tech companies, the money that they have is ridiculous. Like there's there's millennials buying penthouse apartments for like one million plus, and I'm like, where, where are you getting this money from? Like I, I don't I don't get it. But um, yeah, kind of to touch on what Chris was saying too, with meeting them before going out. Um, our region in Waterloo and Kitchener saw a major influx of buyers from the GTA coming in over the past two to three years. So we're kind of in the middle ground now, where it's like okay, we'll go show you a home before we sign up anything. And we want to trust you, but at the same time, we want to sign you up to something because we don't want to get screwed. Um, and what's happened a lot, which I'm sure some of you have probably seen on listings out in Waterloo, Kitchener, Cambridge, and Guelph, is that we've started putting in, um, in the realtor remarks, uh, stating that if a buyer is shown the home by a member of our team or our agent, that and they're currently signed up with another buyer or with a brokerage under buyer rep, that a 1% commission, 1% uh, off the commission will be reduced from the cooperating brokerage and applied to the listing brokerage. So, and that is really just coming to effect because there were a lot of buyers coming and they were lying and they said they weren't represented and we didn't sign them up and then they were represented and then we went out and wasted our time showing 20 to 30 homes and they buy one through another agent and it's just, it's yeah. kind of a, not a fun time. <laughs> so we kind of made it safe for ourselves. Um, and so now we're starting to do and, and meet them beforehand and sign up on buyer reps to kind of keep us safe. I guess. How often yeah. are you successful in actually getting that extra 1%? A lot. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 We put it in most of the, so it's, it's in the uh, realtor remarks on the listing and then on our schedule B, we always have a schedule B attached to all of our listings that we have to include low offers and on there it's stated. And if it is removed, then it's just uh, shit show from then on <laughs> sure. lawyers get involved and obviously i think your, your time should be respected and all that too yeah. yeah how many times have you had it where if the buyer agent really fights for that that they're able to be successful in getting that does that happen we've had it so this situation has come across maybe 10 to 15 times over the past two to three years um and there's been about one time oh, that really? has happened and it was just one of those situations where it's like okay yeah, yeah. you're 
dragging us on too long. So sure. I'm no, just asking out of curiosity, not to be disrespectful. Yeah. Yo, no, it's like I said, it's we're in a middle ground right now. We just don't know what to do because yeah, sure. of all those buyers. It's a, probably about seventy five percent of the buyers in the past two to three years have been GTA. Mm-hmm. And then everyone from our region is moving north or west, so like London or Listowel or places like that. And up there we don't we don't do that. Because we just know. <laughs> so the, um, so we're just gonna wrap up. I have a couple of quick questions for you. Yep. Um, how many times will you follow up on a lead before you give up? Quick answer. Gut gut feeling. Never. I, I I have people in my system from three years ago. They keep you our system is nice. We can actually see if they open their email. So I get to see and if, if they're not responding to me, I, I don't care. I'm still going to send them stuff. So, Shelby? Um, I'm similar. I, ha- I have kind of steps in place, like a, it's a, like a uh, three or four touch of um, their initial res- response to their inquiry. Then I'll send solds. Then I'll send more comparable. Like I do that three times. And then after that, it's either on a drip um, or depending if I have someone on a portal on Matrix. And I can see they're opening it, but they're not replying to my emails <laughs> or phone calls or texts. Then so I get to the, I email the, I'm going to assume you're not interested anymore. I'm going to cancel it. And then they reply. <laughs> no, don't cancel it. <laughs> like, why didn't you reply the whole time? Very similar. Like it, it all, I add everyone that has a valid email into our database and into our um, newsletters that we send out every month. Um, but typically I'll call email text every single person at least two or three times. Um, sometimes it's not me personally, but I pass it on to my team. They are normally are the ones that handle any new leads that come in. Um, really with any lead that comes in, I try and find out more information about them, whether that's through Geo Warehouse, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And we hit them like three or four times a week, kind of forever until they maybe like, so maybe 30 times and then we'll give up. And if they don't answer us, we knock on the door with a real estate market update. And oh that works all the time because nobody's doing that and it's service. And it's, again, it's stepping outside of what's comfortable. And you might feel like you're bugging someone and you wouldn't want to be bugged if you were them, but they don't really know what they're doing and they're going to open houses and all this stuff. Why wouldn't you just knock on the door? And you're probably wondering what your neighbor's house sold for. Here's what it sold for. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, Brock, I saw your calls for the last three weeks. Sorry, I haven't gotten back to you. I've been busy. And then they call me two weeks later and they want to, do business or they want to communicate so I think we need to be way more aggressive in the real estate space than we are or than we're even comfortable with being so you guys have so much in common but number one is you all know that you're in sales first mm-hmm. yeah um, no seriously mm-hmm. and people will generally have to move just to get away from you yep that's sort of yep. once they initiate contact which is awesome if somebody calls you um, do you have a policy as to how quickly you'll get back to people or shoot you an email what 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 would you do what, um if it's a pretty much we have a, a, a team kind of online number so hi welcome to blah 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 press one for this person press one for that person so i can see what it's a call from there and if it's a call from there i respond as soon as possible if i'm busy then obviously i can't if I'm playing hockey you can't respond but i respond as soon as i can um if it's a random call one of those numbers that's like 14 to 20 digits long i'm not going to call back if they don't leave a voicemail then it's hey do you want your ducks cleaned no so I'm not going to call them back. Um, any emails that come in, I email as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, I always do as quickly as possible. If I'm in the middle, middle of appointments with other people, I'll at least try and send a quick text saying, you know, I've received your inquiry. I'm just um, unavailable. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So at least they know that it's coming. Um, if I don't have time to actually sit down and properly answer what they've been asking, but as soon as I can. Yeah, same as soon as I can. I've got listings for response times on my online leads. Um, I get it in. I call if I'm available. I'll call right away. I call like I said. I call, text, and email. If I don't get anybody on the phone, I'll send a text and then I'll send an email as well. Because you don't know how people want to be responded. Like I have a client now who I email. She, I never even had her phone number for the longest while. We listed her house. I had to get her phone number there when I signed the paperwork. I only had her email and now it's, she wants to be contacted through text. And so it's, you got to ask the clients how to, they want to be communicated once you build that rapport a little bit as well. Yeah, right away for sure. People don't care about yeah. us or our personal life or if we're no. playing hockey or if we're at a funeral or at a wedding, they want to get responded to right away. It's mm-hmm. important to them. It's urgent to them. And 
I know it kind of sucks for us, but they don't care about us and we need to be on top of them. Mm-hmm. For sure. So last question, how do suppliers win your business? What's the top two or three things they can do? Brock? Service and response time, for sure. Yeah, Crystal? same. Same service yep. and response time? Uh, communication with me and high level service for a client. And Jake, you got the last word. Yeah, exact same. I, I call it the wow factor. They got to wow me. So yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. I think uh, I think we've covered so much, uh, pretty much everything that we, uh, we talked about uh, covering. Are there any questions from uh, you guys? Uh, it's just ironic that the panel says mild and misunderstood. Uh, when the consumer uh, studies come in, well, that was the most volatile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was at 78%. Schoolers were the worst at 64 And then Jen, White, Webb, 70 Yeah. Well, I was thinking this the other day, actually. I was like, I feel like millennials trust, like, real estate agents a heck of a lot more than older generations. And that's just my personal opinion. But everyone that I've talked to, they're like, I need your help. Yeah. And I know there's all those for sale by owner companies and everything now, purple bricks, blah, blah. And they try, but most of them fail. I'm sure we can agree. So then they always call us and say, listen, I screwed up. Now I need your help. Where, I don't know, I'm, I wasn't in the business 20, 30 years ago, so I can't say from there, but I'm just going off my personal opinion and how I see things. So, I find, too, millennials will pay for the service more than somebody else. Like, for instance, me, I'm a princess and get my nails done and my hair washed twice a week. I don't do it myself because I have too many kids and I don't have my... <laughs> more time than five minutes in the shower. So that's my break time and I pay for that service. And I find a lot more millennials are paying for services that they might not have done in the past uh, or the previous generation. So I find that they're, if we give them the, the, ser- the level of service that we hope to, they will keep coming back and referring people. Yeah. Um, I found too, I, I meant to mention at some point today, um, Another big part of my business is because of reviews. I, I always make sure yeah. to ask my clients yeah. for reviews, and they've turned out great for me. Um, I've had clients say about fast response time, which is great. Um, but I think a lot of millennials, too, uh, like we're not going to just drive to the closest hair salon and walk in. Like for me, I recently got my hair cut again, and I asked a friend for a referral, and then I look online and I read the reviews, and I find that. A lot of millennials are doing the extra mm-hmm. research because yeah. they're, they're okay to pay more, but they want to make sure they're getting yeah. their service. Yeah. What's the best review platform that you think is out there right now? Um, I personally use Real Satisfied. Does anyone use that? No. Google. Oh, really? Like Google yeah. reviews. Um, I, I use, use Real Google. Satisfied. It's yeah. great. Um, I find the best time to ask is as soon as the deal is firm, before <laughs> it closes. I send it off. It's an actual survey. So I kind of get a report card back, which is actually really nice to see. I think... I don't know if they know that I see the whole thing or not. <laughs> and it's focused um, on real estate. Yeah, but it asks, I get to see if they considered other realtors. Most of the time it's a yes. So that is always nice to see, um, et cetera. Then they have room to write a review. Um, that automatically links to my realtor.ca profile. So if anyone's looking at one of my listings, my profile's there. It shows I have five stars and then it has um, reviews attached to it. Um, I've gotten a phone call off that as well. Um, someone from Toronto wanted to come up. One of my listings was one they were interested in. I had a photo, reviews, everything attached. They called me and we went and looked at properties. So Fantastic. I found that's been a good resource too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone, I want to thank that's you fun. for taking the time to uh, come out here and share it with us. Um, we're recording. Uh, this will turn into a podcast and be posted for the, for the whole world to hear what you said. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> and we'll gladly share it with you. And just as a reminder for everyone who's listening and everyone who's here today, uh, Jacob is Kitchener Waterloo. Yep. Uh, Shelby is uh, oh. Collingwood area. Crystal is Brampton Caledon. And Brock is Alton Hills. And so if anyone has any referrals or any business or needs some advice for any of those areas, please feel free to contact any of them and we'll share all of everyone's contact information as we put that. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.